Hey everybody, it is almost May, which means that we are setting up for the next month in the bullet journal and I'm going to talk through my migration process and how I'm making it work to set up for my May setup. Hi, I'm Jessica and I am Pretty Prints and Paper, where I talk about bullet journaling, creative planning, and some artsy things so that we can find systems that are unique and useful. So at the end of the month is the time for you to look back on the past in order to create the future. And a lot of times people are really focused on what kind of layouts they're setting up for the next month that sometimes we forget about what the original bullet journal system talks about. So I'm going to be reviewing that and how I'm using it in my journal. The first step is to review back the last month and notice any patterns. So flipping through, you're going to notice what was useful and what did you use, what did you not use, what created friction and what was really smooth for you. And in looking back, I kind of used the Frankenlight, but not really. I liked having a place to put monthly tasks, but didn't always reference it. Um, what I really like is having the log, the headlines, which was new last month, sleep, and I saw a twist on this that I might incorporate next month from Instagram, and then wellness. So I like all those trackers, and I've gotten a lot better about filling them out throughout the month. But when you look through, the key is that you're going to be looking for open tasks. The key is that you're going to notice what tasks are not being done and ask yourself why they aren't being done. Is it because they're no longer important? Is it because you need to delegate that? Is it because you forgot to check them off? <laughs> uh, what do you notice about the things that aren't getting done? And just trying to be gentle with yourself in that process because we can't do everything. And that is what was important for me over the years, was learning about trusting myself that the things that needed to get done will get done. Some things will fall through the cracks, and that's okay. And if I need to reprioritize, I reprioritize. But what happens is that you take note of these open tasks, and you have a couple different options according to the bullet journal method which is the book from Ryder Carroll, who originated the bullet journal system. And if you haven't read it, I highly recommend that you do. If you're on this channel, it's probably because you are really tuned into the original purpose of the system. But if you are starting, you really need to read this book. Then there are three options that Ryder outlines in the bullet journal method to deal with open tasks. And they are either to migrate to the next monthly log if it's still relevant for the next month. You can put it in the future log and put that reverse carrot pointing to the left. If you put it into the monthly log of the next month, you put the carrot to the right. And of course you can rule out anything that is no longer relevant. And then if you have open tasks that belong to a similar collection of projects, then you put that in a dedicated index or a dedicated project page. So like if I notice that I have a lot of art tasks, I might create an art collection and put all those tasks in that collection and migrate them from the other pages. That is what is kind of key to keeping up momentum and reflecting on what tasks are useful to you and what are not. Y'all, I don't even know what this page is. <laughs> I just... I remember creating it, putting the sticker on there, and then I never filled it out. So who knows what this is. Uh, any ideas as to what I can put in here? Leave them in the comments below. <laughs> okay, and so this is the week that I'm in currently, and um, migrating a lot of these things is going to be really helpful for when I set up my May. There's two different things happening here. I'm reflecting on the system itself with the actual spreads that I'm using, and then I'm reflecting on my life as it pertains to like how I'm approaching it and how I'm living it. There's two layers of things going on and they are kind of manifested in this notebook. So after all of that, that's when I decide what I'm going to set up because I'm going to set up something that is helpful to me. This is my May. I actually just, I chose a sticker. I really liked this kit from Moore Avenue and so I just designed the whole May theme around it and wanted to keep it really simple. <laughs> I didn't want to mess around with painting like I've told you all before. But um, instead of the Franken log, I'm just going to use this as an, a task overview of things that need to get done at some point in May. I still always really like to center on priorities. And again, I'm just using the stickers from the actual kit along with matching highlighters, zebra mild liners, to add a little bit of that matching color. 
but this way I can keep track of some of the major projects that I have going on because May is going to be nuts. Um, here I've recreated those logs, keeping the log, headlines, sleep, and wellness. I'm going to keep all of those. On this side, um, for sleep, I think I'm going to do, there was an idea that I saw online. I don't remember who it is off the top of my head. I'll link it down below. But when I shade it in, I can uh, write in the number of actual hours of sleep. And that can be an easier way than just kind of measuring and counting by the bars. So I'm going to try that next month. And, you know, then I'm going to set up the week. So I kept the pages that were useful. You saw that I adjusted what wasn't. And the next thing I'm going to do is pull over all of those migrated tasks and put in the new ones for May, the things that I know that are going on because of my work cycle, and go from there. So it kind of goes moment to moment, week to week, month to month, and that migration process is a really powerful tool for you to notice what is working well what isn't, so that you can make changes if you want to. And because May is going to be a really busy time for me, knowing that, I, again, will stick to the things that really work, keep it simple, have a touch of pretty, and go from there. But I'm not gonna force myself to do anything that will take too much maintenance, because again, the tool is meant to live your life and not to be your life. And it's part of the reason why I've stuck with the system for over six years now, which is crazy to me, but it's been such a useful tool. I get more clarity about it over time, and I hope that the migration process will be as fruitful for you as it has been for me. Let me know down in the comments, what are you noticing when you migrate your tasks? Are you noticing some patterns in, this, in the stuff that's undone? Are you making some changes in the spreads that you're focusing on? Let me know down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like, share, comment, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!